While there really are no absolute rights and wrongs when it comes to panning, there are a few conventions, certain things that many mixers tend to avoid, that they feel give better results in the long run. One of those has to do with the use of hard panning. As I described in the introduction, panning in a mixer is actually amplitude panning. The apparent position is based solely on the pan signal's level difference between left and right. Remember, all tracks in a mix are routed to the stereo mix bus. The stereo track, naturally, is routed as you'd expect. Left side of the track to left side of the mix bus, and right side to right side. Pretty much a no-brainer. A mono track, since it consists of only one channel, is duplicated and sent to both sides of the mix bus. This happens just after the channel fader, so the panner, despite where it may be positioned visually in the channel strip, is really the last control in the strip to act on that track. With the panner centered, the default setting in all mixers, the apparent location of that track's audio will be the center of the virtual sound field, floating exactly in the middle between the two speakers, the phantom center engineers sometimes refer to. And a track panned at, say, 9 o'clock, for example, will seem to originate from a position about halfway between left and center. But whatever the apparent phantom position, of course there are really two actual physical sound sources, the two speakers. When our ears receive input like this, the same signal from two sound sources, the brain resolves it by locating the sound to an appropriate phantom location in between the two actual sources, based on the relative level of the sound in those two sources. But subconsciously, our hearing apparatus still also picks up on the inevitable slight timing differences between the initial arrivals of the two signals, along with the very subtle phasing that results from that. So the signal's apparent source location, the phantom position, is not quite as solid as if that sound really came from a single pinpoint source. And all the pan tracks share that same subtle degree of phasing, which may actually contribute, subconsciously, to a slight sense of depth, with all the sounds seeming to exist in the same virtual three-dimensional space between the speakers. But this may not always be the case. If you wanted to position certain tracks at the farthest left or right extremes in the virtual sound stage, you could pan them all the way, 100%, to the left or right. By the way, some DAWs, especially ones that had their origins as MIDI programs, may display pan position based on the 127 possible values of MIDI numbering instead of left-right percentages. So all the way left may be minus 64 rather than 100% left, and all the way right plus 64 or plus 63 instead of 100% right. Whatever the labeling, when you pan a signal all the way to one side, it's referred to as hard panning, as in panning hard left or hard right. But this is slightly different than any other stereo pan positioning. Now that sound is really coming out of only one physical source, one speaker, instead of two. This can result in a more solid, more pinpoint location for that sound, that track or instrument, in the mix. But it also may tend to pull that sound out of the virtual sound field between the speakers and locate it to the actual speaker box itself. These instruments, or vocals, might subliminally seem to not be as much a part of the virtual sound space, making them subconsciously stand out unintentionally in the mix. It's very subtle, but many mixers feel that this can negatively impact the cohesion of the mix, the shared sense of depth that may help the listener be, again, subconsciously more immersed in the sound field and drawn into the music. So to avoid any such potential subliminal detriment, many mixers avoid hard panning, instead panning signals only to about 90% or so when wide panning is employed. This maintains the two sound sources. The sound is still coming from both speakers, and preserves at least some of the sense of shared depth with other, less widely panned tracks. Some mixers even stick with somewhat less wide settings, around 80% or so, feeling that if speakers are suitably positioned, this would still yield a wide enough image. Even for those who do prefer to avoid hard panning, an exception may be doubled parts, which are often panned hard left and right. This wouldn't have the same potential drawback, because the doubled parts, while being essentially the same signal, already have slight timing and phase differences, so they tend to blend in well with the mix, while the extra separation leaves more room in between the speakers or other parts, allowing for a potentially clearer and more detailed mix. 
And of course, the issue doesn't apply to stereo tracks, which are also already full of subtle phase differences. Now, this avoidance of hard panning is not at all a universal approach. Many people have no qualms about it, but personally, I do tend to avoid it, typically setting wider pan sounds at anywhere from around 60 to 70 percent to 80 to 85 percent, though I do hard pan doubled parts and, of course, true stereo recordings. But with mono signals, I've always felt it does make a very slight but real difference, and so it's at least worth considering and worth checking out for yourself.